I used a sample in this song, and it's probably one of the coolest ways that I can think of to sample something, to make it completely original, completely unique, and no one will ever recognize it once you're done with it. And it's a really cool creative way to get some interesting textures and sounds. I'm going to show it you here. Here is the sample first and foremost. It is this here. So that is after I've done everything to it. That is how it sounds. I'll just play it for you in context here. And then it comes in again here. So it's carrying a lot of weight, especially in that verse. If I take away the sample and play just as we go in where the guitar comes in. I know it's in your eyes. Back in. It's providing some nice textures and a nice groove, and I'll show you exactly what I did. So what you want to do is you want to start off with a song starter. So I found this really great one from Splice, and the original sample is this. Let me tell you something. So it sounds great on its own, but obviously I didn't want to use that song starter because somebody else might just use it and I want to be a little bit more original with it. So the first thing I did was I grabbed it from Splice and I simply dragged it into a sampler instrument. In Logic, you drag down here, go to Quick Sampler, uh, Original or Optimized. I tend to go to Optimized, um, but then you'll see that it puts all these slices in here for me, just like that. And obviously I can change the sensitivity so that I can have more or less slices here. Now, once I've got it looking a bit like this, the trick is then to just find a pattern within the sample that you think sounds good. At the bottom here, this is the MIDI that I drew out. So this is before any and all processing here. Although harmonically it is consistent, I knew that I was going, only going to be using it as a texture, so I knew that I was going to take away the low end and stuff like that. So I don't mind it being the same note through the entire thing. The main thing that I wanted was to get that kind of hit, that bum, ga, da, da, ga. To me, that was really important. It just felt really nice. So then what I did was after that, I added some channel EQ here. And I just took away a lot of the low end here, uh, up to 382. So if I play how that sounds now. And that takes away just a lot of that low end that we just don't need because I'm going to be adding instruments over the top, as you heard. I then added some RC20 and here I did a bit of distortion. And then I took away some more low end because some low end would have been introduced from the distortion. So I took that out. And then I turned the tone up here with this kind of shelf EQ. So that's actually going to brighten the sound. So I'll play how that sounds. So a lot brighter. For a bit more control, I added this compressor here. just to bring it forward into the mix. I then added some additional width using this stereo image plugin from SSL. You will need headphones for this. This is quite subtle. I then added a case of VMR by Slate Digital, so virtual mix rack in here. I took just more low end out because uh, why not? And then I added this distressor plugin here um, and then the FG11.6 plugin. And the distressor here, I'm using this to get rid of any peaks in the sound, and then I'm using this just to even the sound out again. So three stages of compression on this sound. I then finished with a case of Soothe. And I'll show you the frequencies that it's docking out. 
don't want them. And then I have the finished sound. And then of course I use that to then layer all my additional instruments so you can add guitars over the top. And even though I changed the chords in the harmony, it still sounds great because again, I took the low end out and I'm using this more as a texture and as a bit of a percussive uh, motion, right? It's adding some additional motion and movement to the overall song. So hope you found that useful. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.